Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel, another day in the life of a commercial gas engineer. In this plant room, I'm here to do a PPM on the boilers and to get a list of assets on this new site. So we have the control panel here and there's a swimming pool and there are different appliances on site, different pumps, different chlorifiers. So um, I'm going through them all. So you can see three chlorifiers there. I believe only one of those chlorifiers are online. The other two are off. There are three expansion vessels here. Up here you have the chart of the boilers. There are four boilers here, but only one is currently operational. So they're Brora Gromea's gas free tents. We're going to have a look at those in a moment. So pause at any time if you need to, if you want to look at these drawings closer. So I'm not going to bother looking at the valve chart. Uh, you can see that this expansion vessel here is decommissioned, but there are three of them that are on. So there is one of the chlorifiers. This chlorifier is isolated, as you can see. On the left, you see the valve closed there. The one in the middle has kind of got a cap on it as well and isolated in some way. It may be being used for some form of storage, but I'd have to check further. Then there's loads of pumps here. Loads, probably 20 or so pumps in this particular plant room. And then you have a pressurization unit. Here you've got an air and dirt separator with butterflies. Be careful with those butterflies. I've heard some of those valves have been opening up on people that like they've used it. And someone's kindly wrote the code here on that pressurization unit. Very considerate. Engineers do need to be more and more considerate for others. Okay, so we've got the expansion vessels there either side of the plate, so the boiler side. And then you saw the dosing pot there. And then you also had the supply fan there. Low level supply fan. Yep, operating. I'm going to check that later. And someone's wrote the speed here, but... That is not actually accurate, so don't always believe what you see. It's actually more than two meters per second. And then that's the pressure switch, the air pressure switch. And then you can see that this pressurization unit is saying a service is required. So you've got one, one side of the plate, one on the other side, and you can see the boilers here. This boiler one looks like it was butchered or decommissioned. It's been isolated. And not only has it been isolated, a padlock's been put on it. So they went an extra mile to turn it off. I think the padlock's a bit excessive. A cable tie probably would have been good. Shine off, capping and whatnot. Okay, so this one looks in bad shape and looks like parts have been pulled off of it as well. So they got two off. They decided not to padlock that one. And then there's a fourth one, which was also off, but not properly off so i'm going to have a look at this one later and then this here is the extract fan at high level and although it says 0.15 meters per second it isn't quite that it is higher and then this is the other side of the building there's a knockoff button there more pumps here plates here air handling on roof someone's kindly label that so a nice plate to plate there and another plate on the other side okay and then you can see the pumps on the other angle here a nice match an array of pumps and there's an inverter hiding hiding there a while ago behind the panel I don't know if you saw that so these have got warning notice on it one boiler operational only one okay there's the temperature there of the boiler so here are more parts and here's the burner of boiler number three laying on its side. I don't know if this is salvageable. It might be able to be used for another boiler. Sometimes you can use some of these in an emergency, some of these spare parts here. Ideally, it's best to get replacements. So this is a look inside boiler number four. These are open fluid boilers. So they're taking the air from inside the room for combustion. There's some rat traps in here. There has been a report on this side that there are large rats on site. I don't know why sites let their plant rooms run down like this. 
there should be there should be more TLC involved into keeping them up to standards. Okay, on this boy, uh, I'm not really sure boy number two was happening, but they looked like they were at it, that they were really taking bits off and working at it. So the flue on this one, I believe on this particular unit, they shy off because they said there was a hole in the flue. So that's a shame that it was shut off for there being a hole in the flue. So possibly there's parts that can be taken off of this boiler, but if it's been sitting down for years, there may be not much that can be done with that boiler. I'm carrying out servicing and you remember to put it in high fire you have to hold this button down and I was only getting 17.5 millibar in high fire so gonna recommend that only one boiler runs at a time on this site so low fire remember you hold these two buttons down the minus and that button on the far left and so we've got in low fire now be good to pull this burner out and wash it down but with there only being one boiler on site I'm slightly concerned so this is the model to Romeo gas 310 eco just checking out a few more things on this unit so the boiler is flashing here on one the flashing seems like it means that the switch life has been activated on the boiler so I was looking to work on boiler number four to see if I could get it on so I've got it here on the panel I've got the shunt pump on as well but actually it's not running I turned it on and I tried to get some combustion readings to see if the, what the boiler would be like in high and low fire. So you can see the flash in there near the one. So the flash in there by the one indicates that the switch live is running. So the temperature is set to 90 C so it doesn't cut out too quickly. And I'm waiting for the boiler to kick in. So um, I heard it kick in there, the gas valve. Yeah, there's a flame. So let's see if we can test this before it overheats because the shunt pump is not operating for some reason. I'm going to, need to investigate that, but not right now. So I've got 17.6 millibars on this unit too. So imagine two, both boilers were operating at the same time. It would probably be below 16 millibars, so not good enough. Only one boiler can run at a time, even when I do get the shunt pump running. Oh, you have to be careful in these plant rooms. I've seen some cockroaches, so be careful you put your bag so that nothing runs in it and you take it home with you. So yep, 17 millibars on this boiler. I managed to get it on again, but it's right down to 16. So it's locking out with overheat. So I managed to get some combustion readings on this boiler in high fire. The shunt pump is definitely not running. Probably tripped on the panel and I'm not going to go into the panel today. So carrying out a pressure check, some analyzers have this on them. My analyzer isn't like that, so I have to put my manometer in there. It's ideal to put some tape on it as well, so you get even truer reading. But once you're getting zero or minus, you're laughing. You can see that there's a good pull on the flue. I'm checking the pull with the unit on. So you can check this in low and high fire with the fan running. So now I've got the boiler on. I've switched the boiler off now because I don't want the appliance running ideally when I'm doing my flue flow test. On some of these boilers, there's nowhere to even put your smoke match. Always look out for smoke alarms. Make sure there's none in there or if you do see them, cover them with a smoke alarm cover because you don't want to have the whole building running out. We have 50 to 200 people out on the street because you've set off a fire alarm fire alarm panel is normally near the entrance of the building also find that if there's any fire alarm tests when you're at site because you could be doing a flu flow test around about the same time there's fire alarm testing so now i've got my smoke bomb in try and have a pliers or something else you know look at the flu here so bits like that i'm going to come and inspect to make sure that we haven't got any problems in our flu it's so hard to get outside quick enough to check the chimney as well when you're setting these off and then at the same time, you don't want something melting in the flue and you're not inspecting it because you don't know what could happen. So you can see how this is in, melting in my flue. But I'm going to pull it out in a moment. When you're doing a spillage test, remember the appliance should be running when you're doing a, that particular check. But when you're doing a flue flow test, ideally heat up the flue and then turn the unit off, whatever you're testing. And remember, a spillage test is to check if the unit is pulling properly and a flue flow test is there to check the integrity of the flue. Ideally, you would like another person there, if possible, to run outside and check how it's going out the chimney and check the whole line of the chimney. But pff, tell me how you're going to do that unless you've got an apprentice with you. You can only do your best. So here I am checking the extract fan. And this is the speed we have got here compared to what was written on here. Maybe it's been changed, the speed, but 
there's the extraction at high level. And then this is the low level supply. And thankfully it's more than double the extract. And there's our temperature. Can you see the extract, how hot it is? So our plant room could do with more ventilation for cooling, but bear in mind that the outside is about 27 Celsius today. Remember to visually inspect your flu, go to the roof. Don't just imagine that it's going out fine because you don't know what's happening on the roof. It could be blocked, it could be damaged. Try your best to get to the roof and, and see the termination of the flu. And if you can't, write it on your paperwork. Couldn't inspect flu. Tried to, staff wouldn't allow. You could put at risk if you have to, to say that I wasn't able to inspect it. I couldn't get to it. Staff wouldn't allow me to go onto the roof, etc., etc. But get a picture of your flu, go and look at it and so on. Just too many times I've seen engineers not go and look at the flu. That's one of the reasons you're there for. I think engineers sometimes get carried away with cleaning the burner out every single year. I'm going to wash the burner down and clean it, clean it for every year. And then they don't check about safeguarding life and property. Remember, safety is the first priority when you're doing an inspection. Once you've got all your safety measures out of the way, you've got time left and the client are willing to pay for you to be there to do more checks, then start thinking about boiler needs to be washed down, the burners and so on need to be washed down. Safety is the main priority. Life, safeguard life and property is your main objective as a gas engineer. Then after, looking after maintaining the customer's appliances and keeping them running. The two can run hand in hand because if you're not changing the seals on a boiler and so on, obviously the heat's gonna escape and so on and so forth. But remember, safeguard life and property first and foremost. Okay, at this site, I'm here to check this EOGB burner on a Strebel boiler. So I'm checking the temperature here. So I'm gonna remember where it's set and so on. At the moment it's at 70 Celsius. I'm sure it's going to ramp up to about 90 when I'm finished. Checking the gas head pressure and this is the air pressure. In some cases you'll connect both of them together on a differential. But here I'm just checking my gas pressure. Down here is where my damper motor has been set. It's fixed. It's in a fixed position. There's no first and second stage. There's just one stage. And then here's this gas valve. I've done other videos on adjusting this. Dung's gas valve or multi block, whatever you want to call it. And then here's my sight glass inside. I've got two sight glasses. And then here I've just got one plug in and no other plug, only one necessary. And then my fan motor here. Okay. And then round here, there's my pump, my nice Grumpher's pump. Okay, and then we've got some old time clocks here. I won't be touching these. And then we have a panel here, switches here, and then over here, what else do we have? We've got a safety knockoff, and then we've got ventilation here. Ventilation is barely enough in this plant room, and then someone's labeled the pipework, and then we've got our little meter there little rotary meter, turbine, rotary, what would you like to call it? Okay, and then going to check, put my boiler through some checks and my burner. Remember to make sure that the boiler can handle the burner. There's a little, I think this is a little frost that down here because it's set so low to about two Celsius. So I believe that's like a frost that to keep the boiler in when the plant room gets too cold whether or not it is required. So, and then here we've got an air pressure switch set to, what is that? Set to two millibar pressure, I believe. So if there's not enough air going into this, the unit will shut down. So that's good. Don't adjust those unless you are sure what you are doing. And I'm gonna put a mark on my stats, both of them here, where I found them put things back as you find it, especially in someone's domestic property. As you find it, leave it as you find it. Their settings, their temperature settings, only adjust it if they allow you to. So hopefully this boiler will allow me to test it without overheating. I'm gonna turn it up now and wait for it to kick in. So I'm gonna get my analyzer ready. I don't really like my analyzer, it's pretty old. In its time it was good, but I need a new one. Please, somebody get me a new analyzer. If there's a manufacturer out there, 
Send me your analyzer. <laughs> Please. Okay, our boiler is lit. Seems fairly blue, but we need to see our combustion. And let's have a look in the other side glass. Oh, lovely, nice and blue. Okay, although blue isn't the indication of everything, I have still seen burners burning without being blue and giving acceptable readings. But well, ideally you want blue. So here we go, 2.4 millibars gas head pressure. Okay, we have this cap that you can take off. Okay, and it can be turned around. And I believe that this is the starter. This is the speed of the ignition or something to do with that. I never usually adjust this. We have another adjustment point underneath that cap, the teardrop, but what I would usually adjust if I did have to adjust this is I'd unscrew that screw, then I'd start moving the gas valve. Okay, the gas is set to low pressure switch is set to 10 millibar. I'm gonna shut off my unit, carry out a tightness test at some point. Once it stabilizes, I can drop the pressure and do a tightness test at 20 millibar. Already I'm seeing it holding. Whether you have a leak, you'd know pretty soon anyway, because it will drop like a stone. Remember to do your safety shut off time as well. How, how long it takes for the gas valve to shut off when the supply has been interrupted. Um, so I'm looking at my gas supply here. I'm going to do a working pressure test as well. Okay, so what we've got here now is a working pressure of 18 millibars. I'm happy with that. Now I'm doing a gas rate. So I'm running my unit and I'm going to write down my numbers here to what I find. And then I'm going to check it after two minutes and see what I get. Okay, unfortunately, uh, the boiler could only run for one minute. So I couldn't get full two minutes, but you try to run it for as long as possible and in line with the guidance. So I'm going to times it by two and then get my reading. But ideally, you want it for two minutes. According to my boiler, which was made in 1986, it can run up to about 337 kilowatts. So my boiler, when I gas rated it, it came out at about 200 odd kilowatts. I can't remember the exact number, but I know it was just over 200 kilowatts. So make sure that your burner isn't doing more than the boiler can handle. Then my last job was to check a back boiler and fireplace which i had to shut off because it was not doing what it's supposed to be careful with gas fires they are killers so i had to shut the unit off and put a cap in the unit warning notice and thankfully they had i love how these old cylinders work i don't people don't think people should get rid of the cylinders and change them over to to combines because you've got backup hot water this elderly tenant could have hot water because when i check the resistance on the element it was good around your 19 ohms of resistance so that could work this is the fireplace in question i checked my burner pressure of my back boiler later on after turning off the appliances i did a smoke bomb test to check the integrity of the flu look what i had to do on the when i got to site the programmer wasn't working for some reasons so i had to link it out and put a live on the hot water because I didn't want the heating on on this day it was such a hot day probably the hottest day of the year and I had to run the fireplace in order to test it these were the two units in question that I was working on a Baxi Bermuda LFE 3 Super and a Baxi Bermuda 552 I think the last time I worked on a back boiler was when I was probably about 15 to 20 years old with my dad and I wasn't paying any attention thank you for joining me please leave comments in the section below until next time bye bye bye